day one, two new car songs to share with you, coming up. shopping because I wanted to make sure there's plenty of snacks, tea, coffee because I knew having the June vlogs we're going to be having a lot of visitors so welcome to the start of the June vlogs. As you see I've been out shopping in Audi with my coat on 11 degrees let me show you outside That's what it's looking like. It's supposed to be getting better, but at the moment, but it's strawberry season, so all is not lost. Sorry, no fresh cream because we're getting ready for holidays, bikini weather, but there is natural Greek yogurt, zero fat if you would like some. <laughs> so yes, I have been to B&M as well this morning. I was tempted by all their plants there, but I resisted and yeah, I just bought what I needed to get in store. So, but there were some beautiful things in there, really beautiful, all the bedding plants and everything, but not at the moment. So yes, because I made the mistake before of saying, before I went away, I said, we won't do the grass because it'll just need cutting when we get back. When we got back, it was up to our knees. It was like a jungle out there. So um, yeah, I thought just keep everything simple in the garden if we're going away. So that is the plan. But yeah, I'd love to spend, that's where my money would go if I could spend a load of plants. But at the moment, I need to unpack my shopping, take my coat off. I've not had any breakfast yet. It is five to 11. So I'm going to get this packed away, have some fruit and yoghurt probably, and coffee, and then we shall head up to the craft room and take a look at those new cast-ons and also what is on my hoop for my cross-stitch that I've been up to since we last spoke. So I I've got my coffee, so now I need to make my breakfast. So I'm going to have my fruit and yoghurt. So I've just got some thawed out mixed fruit. In here, we can have some of that. I'm only having a light breakfast because I've got leftovers for lunch, <laughs> which is a bit more substantial. So you have the natural Greek yogurt, fat free. I like this. She says, spurting it over herself. And I have spurted it over myself. See. <laughs> I'm going to cut up some strawberry, nice big chunks I think, so I appreciate them. So that is breakfast in a nice cup. So it looks like an ice cream sundae, <laughs> we can wish. So cheers, cheers. <laughs> Okay, the exciting part now, the cast-ons. Well, first of all, I'll talk about the Lady February sweater. So you've been following me and I think I was just halfway down the last sleeve last time we spoke about this. So I've completely finished it now and it's just waiting for three buttons at the top. So yeah, very pleased that it fits nicely. She's had a little wash. <laughs> and so, yeah. I won't try it on because I had it on on Sunday and nothing's really happened apart from the sleeves match now. <laughs> so that is the Lady February sweater. So I may, no, I won't get buttons tomorrow, 
probably next Friday because I'm going actually I'm going to go into Hobbycraft tomorrow so I will look at their buttons but I think I've got more chance of getting some from Button Boutique in Wellingborough I'm meeting some friends there next Friday so I should take a look in there and hopefully I might find something there so that is the Lady February sweater my new cast done this is the think about Tina because I got it wrong last time the Shah Chartra <laughs> Chartra cardigan by Amy Loudon I shall put a picture up here so you can see how it looks I've already made one of these before in blue I was wearing that on Sunday as well if you want to refer back to that so I am using the same yarn as I used before so this is drops air so it's an alpaca yarn and it's knit up very very quickly and so you start at the top back of the neck you do part of the band other part of the band and then you do some back then one front the other front join it all together so i have joined it all together now and yeah i am on the pattern for the band along the front you use dpn so you go down smaller size and do dpns when i did my original one i found that really fiddly and didn't enjoy it this is by the same designer designer amy loudon and when i did this one i just used the same needle as i used for the rest of it this is the whitmore cardigan so i used the same needle to do all of it and it worked out fine i know other people have done that as well and so I thought I would do that with this and it does work nicely on the band I think it works fine sorry I got the too low but the only thing I would say is if you don't like this is on the edge where you slip a stitch that is quite big now on this let's move close let's get close on this one, I didn't realise till, oh, what's the name? Wool and Wishes, the two lovely ladies on Wool and Wishes, they spoke about this and I didn't realise I'd done it wrong until they said about they'd done it wrong. <laughs> and then I looked at mine and said, oh yeah, I didn't know it was supposed to be like that. So where you slip a stitch, then you're going into, I think it's the pearl. And so if you bring your yarn, so that's the stitch, if you bring your yarn round, of course, it wraps it and you get that pearl bump. Whereas if you come through the back, then you don't get that. So I've learnt my lesson. I don't mind it. As I say, I didn't realise it was wrong until I saw them saying it. So I would have been oblivious otherwise. Um, so this time I've made sure I've done it right. So you do get that edge there, but it is quite big stitches. So if that bothers you, be aware that's what you'll get if you use the same needle. But I'm happy to do that so that, to be honest, if I had to mess about with those DPNs, I might not have knit it again because I found it such a faff and they slip out. And it's just, a, I found it just a struggle. It just made it unpleasant. Whereas this, you're just going straight through, say, so because I've got my stitch marker, I know where to do a bit of rib, and all the rest of it now is just stocking it. I'm going down the body and stocking it straight. So that's why I thought I'll get this one going while I still was just finishing off that one. And then I would start on my next one once I got to the point that I'm just going backwards and forwards. So say this is just easy TV at night knitting. So um yeah, really looking forward to that growing. And I know I'm going to get a lot of wear because I did the other one and it's in the same yarn. So it's lovely and soft next to my skin. So yes, that is my Chartre. <laughs> not Chartre, Chartre cardigan. So I'm not going to do any buttons on this one because I find, whereas this Whitmore one, I prefer it buttoned up. So I don't think I'd make another cardigan version. I'd make another sweater version because I've done the sweater before because I generally just like it done up rather than undone. Um, 
but with this cardigan i always have it undone i was thinking about having one button but i thought well i, ne I don't usually use that so i'm just going to have it as an open cardigan i think for this one no buttonholes just keep it smooth so you don't have all those buttonholes down there because they can look messy can't they so yes very happy with that cast on second cast on finally I think it's had a bit of a resurgence because um, other people have done it. I was watching um, Alex from My Yarn Corner yesterday and she was raving about ranunculus. And it was funny because I'd already cast on my ranunculus. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I've after some research to, because this is out of my comfort zone, it's very oversized, stretchy and everything. I spoke about that quite a lot in my Sunday video, so I won't go over it again. But when I was watching the videos, I was watching what she called Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks has got a brilliant playlist about the ranunculus to help out. And even though I've been knitting for ages, there's things in this pattern I've never done before. So I was referring to it. So, um, yep. Yeah. She was emphasising much about the neckline and it's stretching out and that was sort of, you wanted it to stretch out. And I'm thinking, no, no, I don't want to. So I didn't do the official neck. I only did my one I had. I only did the one I usually do. And um, yeah, so I cast on for the big neck, not wanting it to be big, but just because the small neck was just so few stitches, I thought that's not going to work. So I've gone on to done a normal cast on and then did the rib. I'm using, this is DK weight. I haven't got the balls of yarn with me, so I should show you that later on, but it's a Merino DK weight one. And I didn't get gauge. I think the gauge is 14. I've got about 16, but I didn't like, when I went up needle sizes, I didn't like how it was looking. I really, no. And I was glad that Alex, Fiona Corner, said she used a six. So what I did was, I've been using a six as well. Well, I'll say a six. I was casting on with a six. Then I wanted to go down to like a five for the ribbon. And I then changed to a six. But then when I went to go up to a larger um, circular needle, I realised I was on a five. <laughs> so, yeah. But my intention was this to be on a six. So I'm knitting this on a six. Um, I've got limited yarn. So I don't know how long if I'm going to have sleeves or whatever. But it's more important that I don't want it really cropped cropped. Although if it's going to be stretched out and a loose gauge, I'll probably have a vest top underneath it. We shall see. Um, so yeah, I'm really enjoying knitting. This is, I can see why people say it's addictive and you want to cast on another one. I've really enjoyed doing the stitch pattern. And as I said, even though I have been watching the tutorials, it hasn't been hard. It's just the case of, Oh, that's how you do it. Okay, I'll just carry on. I can watch TV and do this as well. But, like I said, there are things that I've not done before. So it's just I needed to know how to do those. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing this grow. I do want to just work on this now. And um, slightly nervous that it's going to fit because I'm, do using, I'm doing the smallest size. And as I say, I didn't get gauge. So we'll see how that works out. But after saying that, I won't, if it is too small, I won't regret it because I'm enjoying it so much. So I can always give it away or whatever to someone smaller. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully it will stretch out. Being 100% wool, I probably will. I'm hoping I'll be able to stretch it out to fit, but we shall see. What I end up with, I think it's going to be quite a quick knit because I literally cast this on yesterday lunchtime because I've been, I wanted like I said I wanted to get that other cardigan up to the stage where it's just backwards and forwards I because I wanted to have something that I can 
knit on in the evenings watching TV. So, yeah, that is my ranunculus. And I'm really pleased with it. So I should be carrying on with this today. And, yeah, hoping that it grows. I mean, I can see that there's so much stretch in it that it should be fine. And I have checked. I'll show you. It does fit, even though it looks small. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I've got a pin head and a scrawny little neck. <laughs> so it does actually fit me with just a normal one. And it's supposed to be, it stretches out with the weight of it. So we shall see what we get. Oh, there you are. <laughs> So that is the knitting that's on the needles at the moment. I've also been cross stitching. So this is my long dog sampler and it's the Templar Prophecy. And I should show you a picture. Well, I'll show you a picture of what it looks like and also show a picture of how mine looks like when it's all open up. So I didn't want to, because it's so huge, I didn't want to take it out of my Q snap to have to put it back in again. So I'll show you a picture of that. So when I've shown it before, I've said that I wanted to do the horse. This is the next page. This chart is 15 pages. I think I'm about five, six, seven. I think I'm on seventh page now. So I'm just doing that horse. That there is the end of the page. So it'll come down here and it goes a bit underneath as well so I've got quite a big area but that was quite quick to do because it is just back stitch I quite enjoy doing the back stitch it's quite nice there are tons of mistakes in this and it is fudge central <laughs> but um yeah it manages to get back on track it helps having all these different pages because then you can sort of know where you are and what i'm going to do is the other side i should start the other side and come in so i'll meet in the middle so make sure i get that end page finishes in line so that's where i am i am just using one thread for this it's just the dmc 115 it's variegated as you see there's different tones that's all just in this one thread um all the information for the knitting and the cross stitch projects i'm putting in the box below so you can refer to if i don't mention that in any of the videos something you want to know check the information box below the video and that will tell you it just says where the title is of the video then it says more just click on more and it should come up. I think it comes up at the side now with more information. So I shall, because I haven't got loads of projects, I'll make sure that's automatically in there. So you can check if I don't mention it. So I don't have to keep saying the same thing every single day. Because <laughs> you'll get bored of that. Um, I'm just using an even weave. So this is 28 count, I believe. Was it 32? No, I think it's 32 count which is gives you the same stitch size as a 16 count because you go over two holes rather than just one hole. But I could have used, looking back, if I was doing this now, I would have chosen a 16 count fabric rather than the even weave, just to make it easier on myself. Because although you have got, mm, no, I'll take that back. Because there is, it's not full coverage because you have got the spaces, I would do it in this because you can't see the holes of the fabric so much. That is what I like most about the Ada, is you don't see the holes so much on this. But that's what I like about the even weave, that you don't see the holes as much as the Ada. But I still use Ada because some projects is better to use Ada. I like using Ada. So yeah, that is how it's looking. So I'm going to finish that page before I go on to the next thing. Pick up my gun. <laughs> so that's it. So what am I going to do next? I don't know. I know I need to do some hoovering, but we don't want to do that, do we?
I think Gary Squirrels comes looking for him. <laughs> if you didn't hear the um, squirrel story about my husband Gary before, he had a squirrel leap at him <laughs> from a fence when we were out for a walk the other day. And um, this one does look a bit bigger though, so I don't think it's quite that squirrel, but perhaps word has got round to the squirrels that, um, yeah, Gary is Squirrel Man. Unfortunately, he's not here. <laughs> he's off. There's no Gary to frighten, so. That's how windy it is today. <laughs> I've been putting some stitches into my cross stitch so I've got a bit more of that horse done. I'm using needle minder that I made and that was an, actually an earring from Pound Shop. Obviously there were two but I just made it into a needle binder because I thought it would make a good needle minder. You can see the little hole there where it used to attach. So I've been putting some legs on my horse and you can see the tongue and the mouth of the dragon that's going to be here keeping me company has been vera thank you vera from vera's stitching corner she gave me a shout out thank you very much for that and i've also been watching vicky from stitching and button i really enjoy her videos as well so i've been watching her she's been keeping me company while i do some stitching but now I can hear that my washing machine has finished, so that needs me to put that out and make use of that wind outside and get some lunch, because I think it's about half past two now, so I'm late for lunch. So yes, time to move. <laughs> I have no idea what's happening here. I only came to put out my washing. How bizarre was that? I only went out there to put a washer now and two of these huge army helicopters came over really low. So of course I scrambled inside to get the, my phone to get it on video. And um, yeah, then they were a lot higher. But yeah, they were army ones. So I don't know where they're going, but yeah. It's a bit scary actually when they first come over, those really low ones. And then seeing those come in the distance, well, just shows what happens when you go to put your washing out. <laughs> if you can hear strange dinosaur sounds in my kitchen, it's not a strange dinosaur. It is just my fridge freezer. It is very noisy. <laughs> it's always made weird noises. So yes, that is apologies for the noise. So lunchtime, I am having leftovers of leftovers so last night i'd made shepherd's pie the night before and i still had some of the mints that wasn't used in the shepherd's pie when i put the topping on so i kept that she's coming back i've just waited for her to finish now she's coming back i think there's a the lady who um owns the land behind and here she comes <laughs> <laughs> she is cutting the grass which is really nice for her because it means we've got a walkway but I've been waiting for her to finish when I first heard her I thought that it was the helicopters coming back but no she's doing the walkway of the grass and she's back again <laughs> so I'll carry on so I made shepherd's pie had some leftover mints that I didn't use that was already made up with onions and all the stuff that goes into it so I wanted to use that up but there wasn't quite enough so I padded it out with some passata put some extra like peppers and stuff in and a few beans and things just anything that needed using up went into it and then put it into put some chilli powder in for heat to sort of season in and then I had some wraps that needed doing so I put those but I did it like lasagna sheets so I put the meat mixture 
wrap, meat mixture, wrap, meat mixture, and then cheese on top. So that is what I've got, the leftovers. So it doesn't look very appetizing, but it does taste delicious. So I'm gonna zap this in the microwave for an easy homemade lunch. So yeah, leftovers of leftovers, because we are going through a bit of a food crisis here, and I think all around the world, where the prices are going up. So you have to use, be creative, and use every scrap you've got. So that is what lunch is going to be. I promised previously that I would show you some more of my cross stitches that I have around the house. This is the Barbara Anna Love Never Fails, and it's one I did for our anniversary. And yeah, so that is another one. I should put a picture over the top so you can see it more clearly <laughs> for ease for me. So I have had my lunch, it was delicious. And I have been knitting on my ranunculus. While I've been knitting on it, I've been watching um, Davina, Little Worker in Crafts, and she has her, what, what I can't say it. I've got a touch of the Davinas. Um, what have you been up to Wednesday? And it was really good. I really recommend it if you haven't watched it yet. I'll put a link down to it. But somebody has sent, it's all what her viewers are making. And somebody made these amazing little donkeys, knitted donkeys. They're great for a donkey sanctuary. So I shall link Davina's video down there because I really enjoyed watching that. But I have been carrying on with the binoculars. So I have got down to the eyelet rows. So I've just got some eyelets in there now. Probably can't really see them. But yeah, I've got one and then underneath there's two eyelets and that goes all the way around. So that's going very well, enjoying that. I have come to the end of my first 50 gram ball. I've only got four more. I've got them here so I can show you what the label is. I'm using the Debbie Bliss Rialto DK and it's extra fine merino wool. That is what the label looks like. And it is colour 23034. And it is quite a bright hot pink. Really love this colour. Hope it suits me. <laughs> so yes, I think it's going to be a short short sleeve one. <laughs> Because <laughs> if that is a fifth of it, then yes. But if I do 50 grams a day, it's not going to take me long, is it? Because it's been about 20, well, no, over 24 hours since I started. But it's four o'clock now. So I am going to get this video finished and up for your viewing pleasure. Have I got anything else to talk to you about? I don't think I have. So that is it. I'm going to catch up with the sewing bee tonight. I missed it last night, so Gary promised that we would watch it tonight. So I'm going to watch the sewing bee and knit on my Shan... The French sounding one. Chartre. Chartre. Cardigan. <laughs> By the end of the cardigan, I will remember how to say it. So I shall be knitting on that tonight. So depending on how long it takes me to do all the things I need to do to get this up on YouTube I shall do some more knitting on this so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow bye for now